everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to Best of Designers. Today we're taking a look at one of the biggest known designers in the world and that's Bruno Catala. Now when I first got into gaming, he was definitely not one of the biggest named designers. He did a few, he did a few games. In fact, I think I, I first got to know his stuff from a little Versus series that was done uh, there was Tony and Tito and different uh, games there, and I thought, oh, these are interesting. And I found out that he worked with Bruno Fiduti. And in fact, just like Bruno Fiduti, if you watch my list of his, you'll notice that Bruno Catala works with other designers a lot. In fact, on my list of my 10 favorite games that I'm going to talk about today, eight of them are in conjunction with other designers. But he has done some great stuff on his own. Now, some of you might be sitting there saying, wait a minute. Isn't Z Garcia the big Bruno Catala fan on the Dice Tower? He is, as I really like his games. But Z likes them even more. So I've asked Z, actually, today uh, to make a companion list, and you can go check that out of five games that I didn't put on my list that Z thinks should be there. So you can check that out. But for now, let's get into my favorite 10 games from Mr. Catala. Number 10 is Queen Domino. Now, King Domino won the Spiel des Jahres. Actually, not a fan of King Domino. I thought it was too simple, too, eh, the two-player, bigger version of the game is slightly better. I get the appeal of it. I get the domino effect of it. I get the area control. But Queen Domino takes it and adds more of a game to it, more of a, how are you going to put the pieces out there, kind of almost leans a little bit towards Carcassonne. And I thought that was an enjoyable change to the King Domino. I'd rather play Queen Domino any day. Number nine is Queen's Necklace. This is one he did with Bruno Fiduti. Uh, the Queen's Necklace, which is basically the Three Musketeers as a card game. One of the things I really like about this game is the changing pricing of the game. Uh, there is uh, cards in the middle of the table that you can buy, and there's little rings on these cards that show you the cost of the card, but if you don't buy a card, the cost goes down, making it cheaper for the next player. And cards do a variety of effects. Some are take that, some are jewels that you're trying to get so that you can sell them in a jewel auction. The whole thing comes together, and the latest Simon production of this is really well done. Number eight is Longhorn. This is one of the ones he did on his own, Queen Domino being the other one. Longhorn is a almost a Mancala style game. Uh, it's almost like a bigger game he did, Five Tribes, but Longhorn is more for two players as you are moving cows around on these different tiles, trying to collect them. It's a pretty light game that yet manages to feel fairly thinky and well thought out. And it has some really nice production values too. Very highly recommend. This one's not one a lot of people talk about, but I think it's pretty cool, Longhorn. Number seven is another uh, conjunction with Fiduti. In fact, I have three of those on this list. And this one is Raptor, this two-player game in which one person is a bunch of scientists trying to catch raptors, the other baby raptors. The other person is playing the baby raptors and the mama raptor who's going after the scientist. The theme is really fun. It's fairly asymmetrical. There's a bit of a, I'm trying to outguess and out bluff the other person. I just like it. It's just a neat little two-game, a two-player game package. Number six is Shadows of Camelot. Possibly one of his most famous games, this one with Serge Gleget. Uh, this game is the game that I will give credit to bringing cooperative games into the mainstream, maybe Pandemic too, but it definitely brought into the mainstream the idea of a traitor in a cooperative game. Uh, Reiner Knizia's Lord of the Rings, which uh, was the only really, there was, cooperative games for kids and stuff that weren't very good it was the only one that was really out there. Shadows Over Camelot plus the Days of Wonder production of it, which was just mind-blowingly cool, really brought people and then they're like, wow, you can play up to seven players. You can have people drop in and out. It was just an amazing production and an amazing game and still one that I enjoy playing to this day. Number five is Abyss. Uh, this one with uh, Charles Chev Chevalier. Um, Abyss is a game that I don't think gets enough love. When it first was produced, the box cover really, people were like, wow, what is this? This had some really cool looking fish type stuff in this game with warriors and oh man, it just looks gorgeous. But the game is actually really well done too. A game where you are kind of playing a little bit of chicken as you flip over cards and when are you gonna take a card and using pearls to buy cards. It has a really nice expansion to it with black pearls that I also think really highly elevates the game but it's one that I still enjoy and have in my collection. 
Number four is Mission Red Planet. This is the last collaboration I have here with Bruno Fiduti. This game is just such an amazing game. Area control, but uh, as you're trying to control areas on Mars, but you have to load people up on spaceships and send them off. It has a lot of things I enjoy about games where you have cards in your hand, you play one each turn, but once you play a card, it's, you know, it's, it's gone until you play a card that brings the cards back into your hand. Uh, the area control aspect, what I mentioned, a cool steampunk Jules Vernish style theme. This comes together in a really tight, entertaining game that goes up to six players. Number three on my list is Dice Town. Dice Town, for a while I thought about making this my number one actually because I've had such a sheer amount of fun with this one. Uh, we did this with uh, Ma Blanc. Uh, this is a game in which you have dice that are like poker dice and you slam them on the table and you reveal them a little bit at a time trying to make poker hands with these dice and depending on which suits you have the most of on your dice, you can steal money from a bank, go for gold nuggets, um, take cards that can affect players, get land that gets points. This game has a really strong Wow Wow West theme. It's a beautiful look to it. They just came out with a new version of it, and I really enjoy this game. It's one of my most played games, actually. Number two is Seven Wonders Duel with Antoine Bauza. Now, I don't know what the extent of Mr. Kadala's um, involvement was, because Antoine Bauza, Seven Wonders, fantastic game. Seven Wonders Duel, I think, is better than Seven Wonders, and... Maybe it's a Katala injection, who knows? But I'll tell you this, this game took a very good drafting game and made it for two players drafting, which I didn't think two players could do very well, but put it on the table where when you pick a card up, it might reveal other cards, have three very different distinct ways of winning. Um, also had that civilization theme still in there. Just a fantastic two-player game. One of my favorites, Seven Wonders Duel. And then finally, uh, another game with Ma Blanc. What was the other one? Dice Town. Yeah, two of the top three, and this is Cyclades. Now, to be fair, I don't think Cyclades would have made the, the number one spot without one of its expansion, Titans. Um, it would still be in my top ten, because Cyclades is a game where you have these different ancient Greek forces moving around and fighting each other, but bidding on gods and giving them abilities to build towns. The Titans expansion totally overhauls the game, has these giant Titans, the monsters can fight each other, the production quality, it's Matigo, is just amazing. Uh, this is a this is one of the few games I think that kind of crosses the people who like to say, hey, I want to get some dudes on a map and fight each other, and people who like Euro games and auctions. It has a nice cross section there. And while it's not my favorite game in that series, that's Kemet, it is a very strong contender, is one I have on my shelves. I love playing this one, and it's my favorite game from Mr. Katala. Like I said, Z will have some games that I missed on his list, and you're probably thinking, why didn't you mention so-and-so? Well, mention that in the comments. Tell me what your favorite games are of this amazingly great designer. Very prolific. I've seen some of the stuff that's coming out this year already, too. More things coming. I'm sure this list could probably be remade in a few years. One of the hottest designers in gaming, Mr. Katala. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching Best of Designers, Bruno Katala.